Trying to ace your next fluid and electrolyte exam? Well, I've got your back because in today's video, we are gonna cover the need to know information about hypermagnesemia. We will talk about the pathophysiology, causes, symptoms, diagnosis, and treatment of high magnesium levels. And by the end of this video, you'll be well on your way to acing your next test. So if we take the word hypermagnesemia and we break it down, hyper means high, magnes is the prefix for magnesium, and emia means blood. So hypermagnesemia, therefore, is a high blood magnesium level. Normal blood magnesium is a range between 1.8 and 2.6 milliequivalents per liter. So hypermagnesemia, therefore, is a blood magnesium level of greater than 2.6. So magnesium plays a large role in calcium and potassium balance. With both of these electrolytes, magnesium acts as a blocker and sits in front of calcium and potassium channels. So in the kidneys, at the nephron, magnesium is sometimes sitting in front of potassium channels and sometimes it's not. When magnesium sits in front of potassium channels, it blocks potassium from flowing to the bloodstream to the filtrate where it will be excreted in the urine. In hypermagnesemia, however, we have all this extra magnesium, and so it's easier for this magnesium to block potassium channels. And if it blocks potassium channels, then potassium cannot go to the filtrate to be excreted, and therefore high magnesium can also lead to high potassium levels. Magnesium can also inhibit calcium from flowing into a cell. So at the neuromuscular junction, voltage-gated calcium channels on the presynaptic neuron must allow calcium to flow into the neuron in order to cause the release of neurotransmitters and an action potential on the muscle cell. But in hypermagnesemia, there's all this extra magnesium floating around. So it can block calcium from entering the neuron, which slows down the release of neurotransmitters. And if neurotransmitters aren't released as quickly, then action potentials will not happen as quickly. And that means we can't have muscle contraction as quickly. And that manifests as muscle weakness. So magnesium is absorbed by the gastrointestinal tract and excreted by the kidneys. And there's actually only a handful of causes of hypermagnesemia, and we can break them down into increased magnesium intake and decreased magnesium excretion. So an increased magnesium intake can be caused by an increased intake of magnesium containing antacids or laxatives. Can you think of a magnesium containing laxative? How about milk of magnesia or mag citrate? And can you think of an antacid? So Maalox actually has a lot of magnesium in it. So that's oral intake of magnesium, but excessive IV administration of magnesium can also cause hypermagnesemia. And we typically see IV magnesium given for asthmatic patients who are in severe distress or for pregnant moms to manage eclampsia. And for decreased magnesium excretion, the only thing I really wanna talk about is renal failure. When we're in renal failure, the kidneys cannot filter and excrete magnesium, and this can lead to hypermagnesemia. Because magnesium is a calcium channel blocker, it can lead to muscle weakness. So in the neuromuscular system, we will see things like diminished deep tendon reflexes and skeletal muscle weakness. And this is actually a really important sign because when you have an eclamptic patient, wait, is that a word, eclamptic? I mean, a patient with eclampsia and you're giving them a magnesium infusion, a sign of magnesium toxicity is diminished deep tendon reflexes. And Tess love to talk about this, so just commit that to memory. So in the respiratory system, muscle weakness of the intercostals and the diaphragm can lead to hypoventilation or slower, more shallow breathing. And again, this is a big test question. And really in practice, 
anytime I have a patient on a mag drip, I always just put them on a pulse oximeter. That way I can monitor their O2 and their respiratory status. In the cardiovascular system, smooth muscle weakness of the arteries will lead to hypotension because the blood vessels cannot vasoconstrict. And then as regards the heart itself, magnesium blockade of calcium channels slows down the depolarization of pacemaker cells and can lead to bradycardia. Remember that in order for pacemaker cells to fire, both sodium and calcium must flow into the cell in order to cause the cell to reach threshold. After the cell reaches threshold, it will cause an action potential. But in hypermagnesemia, all the extra magnesium is acting as a calcium channel blocker, and it's not allowing calcium to flow into the cell as quickly. And so this will cause the pacemaker cell to take longer to reach threshold potential. And if it takes longer to reach threshold potential, then it takes longer to fire an action potential. So pacemaker cells are now firing at a slower rate. And this will cause the heart rate to drop and you will see bradycardia and in very severe cases, cardiac arrest. So for the diagnosis of hypermagnesemia, draw a metabolic panel and see that the serum magnesium level is greater than 2.6 milliequivalents per liter. So for the treatment of hypermagnesemia, monitor cardiovascular and respiratory status. Calcium gluconate is the antidote for magnesium overdose. And I want you to star this and sing it from the rooftops because this is most important as regards treatment. And the reason that we use calcium gluconate is because magnesium is a calcium channel blocker. So if we now flood the body with all this extra calcium, then now calcium and magnesium are in a competition against each other and calcium might just win. You'll also want to decrease your intake of magnesium containing antacids, laxatives, and foods. Now remember, magnesium is found inside the cells. So as regards food, animal cells will be high in magnesium. So think things like pork, beef, chicken, and tuna. And then the acronym MAG with an N can help you remember the rest. So think milk, avocados, green leafy vegetables, and nuts. These are all high in magnesium. If kidney function is preserved, you can give diuretics, which will increase the excretion of magnesium. Hey guys, welcome back. If you missed my hypomagnesemia video, then click or tap the screen over here. And if you want to see more fluid and electrolyte videos, then click or tap the screen over here. I have a whole playlist for you. And if you got value out of this video, then tap the like button. Otherwise, stay safe and I'll see you guys next time.